Dr. Grimm, tell us a little bit about the background of this exhibit. Well, th this exhibition was planned and organized by the Norman B. Leventhal Map Center. Uh, one of our primary missions is to make our maps known to school children. And we determined that uh, with the 150th anniversary of the Civil War approaching, this would make a good topic that we could relate to classroom endeavors. As we planned the exhibition, we decided we did not want to do the typical Civil War exhibit that focused on just the battles. Instead, we decided we wanted to talk about what were the causes, what led up to the Civil War. We would look at the war itself, and then finally we wanted to talk about how the war was remembered. So in that, ca in that context, uh, we developed an exhibition with three parts. The first part of the exhibit focuses on the causes of the Civil War. We call it Rising Tensions. And this theme was inspired by a cartoon that was published uh, in 1864 by Courier and Ives. This cartoon shows Abraham Lincoln and Jefferson Davis pulling on a map of the United States and pulling it apart. Um, this emphasizes the idea that the United States in the pre-Civil War years was not a unified country. It was a country that uh, had different economies and different cultures, which resulted in different political tensions. Dr. Grimm, one of the issues that caused some of the tensions between the North and the South prior to the war was the issue of slavery. And this map that you're standing in front of now illustrates that. Uh, talk about it a little bit, please. Okay. Um, one of the very interesting maps in the exhibition is a map that was published in 1861, which shows the percentage of slaves in each county uh, in the southern states based on the 1860 census. Slavery was one of the major issues between the North and the South. Generally, people talk about the free North and the slave South, and they think slaves were uniformly distributed throughout the South, but they weren't. They were most prevalent where plantation agriculture uh, was the primary economic uh, activity. So tobacco in Virginia, cotton across much of the South, and sugar in the lower Mississippi Valley. Now this map was very important to Abraham Lincoln. He studied this map, and we know that because an artist, Francis Bicknell Carpenter, uh, included this map in the painting of Abraham Lincoln announcing the Emancipation Proclamation. The artist lived in the White House for six months and recorded how Lincoln looked at this map. He was interested not so much in the dark areas, which were the he areas of uh, heaviest slave concentration, but in the, the lighter areas, because that's where he would find more sympathy for the Northern troops and for his announcing the Emancipation Proclamation. Many people, when they think of a map, they think of something that displays a geographic uh, uh, feature but this is a map of something else, it's more of a social feature. And talk about how those are important in an exhibition like this. Okay, well this map is, this particular map is very uh, important because it was one of the first thematic or statistical maps published in the United States. It took census data and uh, represented it uh, according to geographic areas. It's not the type of map we normally expect. It doesn't show uh, topography or towns or cities, but it shows one statistic and it shows the spatial distribution at that particular time. Once the war began, people were obviously interested in following the war and the progress of the war. We're standing in front of something called a marking map. What is that? Okay, this map um, was prepared, it was published in Boston, it was prepared for the people at home uh, to follow the war. So in other words, as they received news, either by telegram, newspaper, or letter, they could locate on the map where battles were taking place, and if they liked, they could use uh, red and blue colored pencils, which came with the map, to f mark the route of the, uh, the regiment or their uh, relatives as they moved from battle site to battle site. Obviously, at that time, uh, people were not getting real-time information about wars as we do today, uh, so this was how they, they kept track of things. 
What was sort of the time delay in, in reporting at the time between the a time of battle and the time it would appear in the newspaper? Do you know? Um, it varied. At the beginning of the war, uh, we have one example of a newspaper map that appeared 10 days after the battle. Uh, then when the battle of Antietam took place, uh, we see maps appearing in newspapers two to three days after the battle. But the time was um, uh, expedited because railroad networks provided uh, better transportation, telegraph provided uh, me quick means of sending information. So this was the first time that people at home were receiving news within days or a week of an event much different than today when we have instantaneous coverage. We've seen many maps here prepared by professional cartographers, but there were also some maps here prepared by individual soldiers. Uh, talk about those for a little bit. Yes, one of the ways that people at home uh, would learn about the war is through letters and communications they had with their relatives who were, on, uh, who were part of the, uh, the war. Uh, one particularly good example is a series of letters written by Henry Ropes. He was a recent graduate of Harvard and he joined the 20th Massachusetts Regiment. He wrote extensive letters home to his father and his brother. They were four or five pages long and he would describe in detail the action of the battles and where they were camped. And he occasionally drew maps. One of the maps shows uh, where his regiment was positioned and, and how they moved through the town of Fredericksburg, Virginia when they were in a battle there. The last letter uh, in this letter book is dated in June of 1863. His regiment is marching north from western Maryland up to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. There are no more letters in the book. Uh, he was re uh, Henry Ropes was uh, shot by a stray bullet on the morning of the third day while he was performing morning watch. And it's reported he was reading a Dickens novel at the time. The very last item in the volume is a map that uh, was prepared in October 1863 when his brother, John C. Ropes, went, visited the Gettysburg battlefield and uh, officers of the regiment showed him where his brother died. So on this particular map, there's a little X that says HR died here. It gives us a very personal uh, perspective on the war as opposed to the commercially published maps that we've also seen. Dr. Grimm, every war has its winners and its losers and the poster that we're standing in front of now talks about the nation's heroes. Uh, talk about that for a bit. Okay. Well, the final section of the exhibition talks about remembering heroes and remembering battles. Uh, heroes are represented in many f fashions. Um, many of the communities throughout the, our country have monuments to the soldiers that uh, lost their lives from those particular communities. We have posters such as this which honor uh, the military heroes. As we presented this exhibition to school children, we would ask them the question, who's missing in this depiction of heroes? Uh, as you can see on this particular poster, these are all men, they're all white, they're all military leaders, they're all northern military leaders. Uh, but there were many other people who contributed to the war effort. Obviously all the southern leaders, there are the blacks who helped uh, fight in the war as well, and there are the women and the children at home who prepared uh, slippers and bandages to help the convalescing soldiers in the hospitals. But the history is uh, written by the winners. Exactly. Dr. Grimm, what can these maps tell us that a, perhaps a historical narrative can't? Well, for me, maps are probably are a primary way of thinking about a particular event or series of events. Uh, maps allow you to place events in a spatial context. Uh, you can read about it in a book, but unless you understand, uh, let's say, the Battle of Gettysburg, how the uh, Union troops uh, occupied um, Cemetery Ridge, and which was the high point of the, the particular battle, and the southern troops were moving across uh, flat lands, uh, 
it's a little hard to imagine what that particular event was like uh, unless you can see it on a map and relate it relate actions to uh, a physical base. And how long is the exhibition here at the Ocean Map Library? Okay. The exhibition has been traveling since it opened in uh, Boston in April of 2011. Uh, it's traveled to the Grolier Club in New York City, uh, Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C., and now it is closing here at the Osher Map Library. It will be on display here at the Osher until August uh, 22nd.